One of the really interesting rocket companies that has been launching for a little while in the space, it's a newer one, is Rocket Lab. Rocket Lab has really taken to the small satellite market. They realized that there was an untapped demand. You see, when you go into space, there's basically two ways you can do it. You can be the primary payload, you're paying full cost. In the event of a Falcon 9, it's about $50 million. Prices go up from there. And then you get to exactly the orbit you want to be in. Or you can significantly reduce the cost that you pay by being a ride share, and you can pay five to 10 million, but you're subject to the whims of the primary payload. You're not going to be able to be placed in exactly the orbit you want. You're going to have, be subject to delays if the primary payload's delayed, and so on and so forth. Well, Rocket Lab realized, hey, we have an option here to build a launcher that will specifically target these small satellites. We'll put them into exactly the right orbit that they want to be in and let them do what they need to do. This saves fuel on the spacecraft so they don't have to make any corrections and overall it's just a better experience for them. They're running with this and they're doing fantastic. They have 13 or 14 launches. They've had a couple of small issues that have come up, but that's pretty par for the course. They're a really innovative company. They're the only company in the world that is using electro turbo pumps where they're using basically like a pump you could pump your car with or motor or whatever to run the turbines instead of having some kind of a gas generator cycle like pretty much every other one does or a pressure fed system. These are actually working pretty neat and it's a really, really high tech rocket that's quite small, the upper stage could probably fit into this room, for instance. And the payloads certainly could easily fit into this room where there are satellites that are much, much bigger than this room that have been carried into space. They're doing fantastic. One of the interesting things that they have announced that they have the ability to do, and they've recently announced that they've done this, is to build their own satellite bus. The Electron rocket that's their workhorse is a two-stage rocket in and of itself but it has an optional third kick stage that can kick the satellites off into an even more targeted orbit. There's a limited range that the upper stage can reach. With this kick stage, they can greatly, greatly improve things. But they realized, hey, we have communications, we have control, we have attitude sensors. We have almost everything you need for the bus of a spacecraft. The only thing they need is a continual power source, which you could just add on some solar panels, and there you go, you have the bus. All you really need beyond there is the payload to be able to do something useful. And they recently tested this out. They were able to launch their own kick stage that had one of these satellites. It was a secondary payload, but they have a camera on it that's working pretty well. And it seems like it's, it's doing exactly what it was intended to do. One of the interesting things though, is they can actually send this into a deep space mission. Now, this is a small rocket, they can't go that far, but they're gonna carry a 25 kilogram 12U CubeSat to a near lunar orbit. It's the gateway orbit that's kind of going around the moon, but it's a weird gravitational region between Earth and the moon that allows it to work. Well, they're gonna bring this satellite there for NASA to test it out. And if they can do that, then they can probably do something even crazier, like, send a spacecraft to the planet Venus. Venus is the easiest planet for us to get to. We can land a spacecraft on Mars much easier and operating in the environment of Venus is very, very challenging, but we can pretty easily get a spacecraft to go there. It takes roughly the same amount of energy to orbit the moon in this gateway orbit that it does to send a spacecraft all the way to the planet Venus. So it's totally, totally possible to do this. The founder of Rocket Lab, Peter Beck, is really, really interested in doing this because Venus isn't really a very well understood target and has a lot of interesting potential things that we've realized about it since we sent spacecraft there. As I'm talking right now, there is a lot of spacecraft on Mars. You have, I believe, four orbiting spacecraft that are in good working shape. You have two landers that are there and you have three more that are on their way. So it's really been well explored. We've had a spacecraft operating there continually for the last 20 years. It's pretty amazing what we're doing there. 
Venus, on the other hand, is pretty unexplored for a number of reasons. It's a really, really hard planet to really discover anything about. The thick clouds make it difficult to have an optical sensor to look through the clouds. There's only a very few small specific windows where you can do something. And it's just a really challenging, challenging operating environment for a spacecraft. It's so hot on the surface and it just doesn't work very well. You can only send a lander that'll work for a couple of hours right now, although we're trying to figure out ways to make that work for a longer period of time. So how does Rocket Lab figure into all of this? Well, they can at least carry the 25 kilogram payload that they're carrying to the moon. They could possibly go as high as 50 kilograms if I've done my math right. And that will be TVI, Trans-Venezuelan Injection Orbit. That's how much this mass is going to be headed towards there, plus the small amount of mass that the bus will require. You can have one payload that you integrate into it that can do everything, or you could separate things out. But that's pretty much what we have to work with, a very, very small amount of mass. What kind of mission could you do for that? Well, first of all, could you do an orbiter with there? And I think the answer is not really. I think an empty photon bus could orbit Venus in a very, very high orbit, but you're gonna have a really hard time getting it into a useful orbit. And also, you don't have any room for a payload. You may be able to put a tiny, tiny payload on there, maybe a kilogram or two, maybe a camera, but the camera's not gonna be high enough resolution to see any higher than we already have of the planet. So that's not very likely the source of such a mission. You could do a flyby mission where you have the payload that's intended to take pictures of it while it's going by. There again, I don't think that's really what you would want to do. We already have had spacecraft orbiting the planet. We even have one now, a Japanese mission. It doesn't seem like you gain much with a flyby with that kind of constraint. But what about some kind of a landing type of thing? Well, Venus, unlike most of the other objects in our solar system, has a very thick atmosphere. So you can target the atmosphere or you could target the ground. And let's talk about this separately. The atmosphere of Venus is very thick. It's primarily composed of carbon dioxide and sulfuric acid. Nasty, nasty stuff. But because the atmosphere is so dense, it's actually very, very easy to put a balloon in there. If you took the air in this room, it sealed this room off, and you used a light enough shell so that it didn't weigh things down much, you put it around Venus, and it would actually float in the atmosphere. And moreover, it would float in a part of the atmosphere that is relatively Earth-like. It's still warmer than you typically find on Earth, but it's much, much cooler than the surface. We're talking 50 to 60 degrees centigrade, 140, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Life can still live there, but it would be a little bit challenging. And if you go higher, then you can have a little bit cooler too, although the air pressure is less. So there's always these kinds of trade-offs that you have to deal with. Now, outside of the spacecraft, it's still a sulfuric acid environment, still pretty nasty, but it has some potential for life, which is becoming an increasingly recognized thing. So you could have a balloon that would go there, and it turns out that the Soviets actually sent two balloons to Venus. The Vega mission, which as the Soviet usually did, they sent a pair of them was a pair of spacecraft that they sent to fly by first Venus and then approach the comet Halley. So that way we could understand better. It was a part of an international collaboration to visit there. And we were able to learn a lot of cool stuff about it. These balloons were dropped off on their way there. They're tiny, they're 21 and a half kilograms. Perfect for some kind of a mission to send a balloon on a rocket. They had to be relayed back to Earth, though. They didn't have the capability to contact all the way there. So it's still kind of a flyby type mission, but you're sending a probe into the atmosphere. That's totally doable. And if we had a really good relay around Venus that could send these signals back, you could easily have one of these missions last for forever, basically. One of the reasons we're able to do such great Mars exploration is because we have relay satellites that can 
relay the signals back. There's been spacecraft, the Phoenix lander, for instance, didn't have the capability to talk directly with Earth once it had landed. It could only talk through these orbiting spacecraft. So this is entirely possible. You may not be able to have a whole balloon though. I, this 21 and a half kilograms, I don't know if that included some kind of a heat shield to slow it down, but I think they could send at least one balloon. And there's actually an effort going on in the United States to send a long duration balloon to Venus to be able to explore it. That's totally, totally possible. You wouldn't really want a camera on there. This is still above the cloud layer. You're still going to have a really hard time seeing down to the surface. You could have one of these spacecraft hit Venus. The winds on Venus are crazy, crazy, crazy strong. And so the spacecraft would get blown around a lot. There'd be a lot of turbulence and it would have a really hard time, especially with such a small spacecraft to point an antenna directly towards earth. So you would need some kind of a relay satellite to be able to send the signals back. Now the bus could potentially act like that. If it dropped off a spacecraft to go enter into the Venus planet, you could have a relay signal set up so that you were sending from this atmospheric probe, the signals to the bus and then the bus back to earth. That's entirely possible. In fact, that's the common paradigm for all of the Soviet landers onto the planet. In fact, the Soviets even did the same thing on Mars. They didn't build solar powered landers. They built battery powered ones that would operate for a couple of days and that's all they could do. So we could totally, totally make this work, but it would have its challenges to say the least. The photon bus could just drop off the spacecraft, act in relay mode. You'd have communication for a couple of hours. A long duration balloon wouldn't really work unless we can get a relay satellite there, which by the way, is actually a possibility. There is at least two missions that have been twice proposed and twice accepted into the final class of discovery missions for NASA that would send a spacecraft to Venus. If one of those goes, they're probably going to have the ability to relay signals back to Earth so that you can have a lander and be able to do some of these interesting studies. And separate to that, there's also an effort in the United States to build a small spacecraft that could tie along that would be able to fly into the upper atmosphere of Mars. And there's also an effort to build a small spacecraft that could tie along that could fly in the upper atmosphere of the planet that could also be launched on a rocket lab that payload is small enough, but it doesn't have the ability to relay back to earth. So what about a landing type of mission? Well, I don't think we would be able to discover much more about the planet than we really know. There are a lot of regions that we haven't visited. The United States has actually never taken a picture of the surface of Venus, at least not one that wasn't from orbit. The only people who have done that were the Soviets. We could take some, we would be able to learn a few things. We probably could get it to last a little bit longer than the Soviets, but it's not something that's going to work for a huge amount of time. This is something that's totally possible that they could do. If you wanted to get soil samples and to look into them, they could do that. But the surface of Venus is probably not that interesting. It is absolutely insanely warm. It would melt lead. Computers are built with lead to solder the joints. It just, you have to build a special kind of spacecraft to make it work. And it's crazy, crazy difficult. By far, the most interesting thing I think you could do is send some kind of an atmospheric probe. You'd want something ideally that could float around a little bit. And what are you going to do while you're there? Well, in my mind, the most interesting thing is to look for life. And it turns out I did this conclusion completely independently before I looked at what Rocket Lab was going to do. And it turns out that's exactly what they're planning on doing is to have a spacecraft to separate out from their photon bus, enter the atmosphere and to try to determine if there's life in the upper atmosphere of Venus. Of course, my personal favorite mission is to Venus to go and search for some origins of life. It's one of the more likely spots in the solar system where we could find life just like underneath the surface of Mars underneath the ocean of Europa or Enceladus. The upper atmosphere of Venus has similar conditions that are close enough to Earth-like that we think that life may be able to exist. It'll be really interesting to find out one way or another. And 
hopefully this happens. It would be amazing if you could do this. The mission that Rocket Lab is sending to the moon, they're charging $10 million, which sounds like a lot, but that is dirt cheap for a mission to the moon. It's by far the least expensive mission that has ever been sent. It'll be really interesting to see what kinds of things they can do. I look forward to hearing more about this and I look forward to understanding more about Venus. Despite being the easiest planet to get to, there's so much that we don't know about it. Thank you guys very much for everything. Let me know whatever questions or comments you guys have. Let me know if you have another idea on a Venus architecture that may be of some interest. Thank you to my Discordians who helped me to put together things. You can find a link in the description below. And to my patrons who helped to fund some of the upgrades that hopefully are improving my quality. You guys are awesome. Until next time, keep on tracking. Take care.